Third, fourth, and fifth graders, I do want you to look at the kindergarten through second grade video um, just so that you won't be lost. I'm not saying you would, but it will help you with this part of the project that we're going to work on. Um, I'm going to try to raise the difficulty level for you guys. So um, we're going to be working on compounding what the lower grade levels have been doing and they've been drawing one item at a time we're going to compound our difficulty by placing one object on top of another um, whether it be a dresser or a table so um, again like I said with the kindergarten through second grade video the end result or the final piece that I'm trying to work you all towards is I want you all to be able to draw an interior room or a room in your house, whether it be your bedroom or living room or dining room. And so we're working on drawing shapes and forms uh, so that you can build up to drawing that assignment. And that will be, uh, I guess these are units building up to that final assignment. Anyway, um, like I said, don't forget to go back and uh, look at the kindergarten through second grade video. Here we go. So the first thing I want you to do is either fold your paper in half or you can trace that line or you can just draw the line in the middle of your paper like this. So just like in math, division means to take one whole thing or object and to um, break it apart and in our case by twos because that's what half is into two equal parts um, you're going to draw on both sides of this paper so you can go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing to the back side like so alright since you all want something a little more challenging we're not going to worry about the background yet, but we're going to draw a table and an object on that table. Um, so to start with, you have to determine whether or not you're going to draw a rectangular table or a circular table or a round table. Um, for my first one, I'll be using a rounded table. Um, just like a cylinder or a can, when you look at it from head on, it looks uh, rectangular. My table is going to be round, like a circle, but when I look at it uh, from a direct point of view, it's going to look like a rectangle like this. Um, my table also has a part that comes down. This is where the drawer is. Then it has a little beveled edge that comes out. Like so. My table also has a drawer. So I'm going to be using a rectangle. And you can change the width of the drawer and a knob. And then my table has legs, but I'll let you catch up. my table has four legs but when you look directly on you should be able to see just two and I'll simplify it to where you just see two but my legs come down like this then I have another shelf here you can make it rounded on the edge or make it look like a rectangle and then the legs continue on like so now I know this leg is a little far over but this is just an exercise so it doesn't have to be exact to make mistakes is fine now you're probably saying, Mr. Lewis, the legs of your table don't look like that. Well, that's because it looks like I have some um, rounded edges as well. So I'm also going to include that by drawing circles and then 
I'm going to change this. This line will come closer to the circle, trace the outside edge of the circle, trace this edge of the circle, and then come up. Remember, we start by drawing lightly. On the other side, I'm going to imitate this. I'm only going to trace or outline the outside edges. Like so. And then come down and erase the parts I don't need. The lighter you start off drawing, the easier it will be to erase the lines. I'm having to press down a little bit harder than what I'd like because if I draw as lightly as I usually do, the camera won't be able to pick it up. Same thing for the other side. I'm going to start at the top, outline the outer edges or contour of those circular parts. And it's interesting to watch my own videos because um, I notice small differences, subtle differences, like my objects will be leaning to one side or the other because as I draw them I'm sitting down, not looking um, down slightly as I normally do when I draw. Alright, so that's the gist of the table. I'm going to draw the lamp that's actually on the table. I could change the object to a different object, but I'm going to stick with what's on the table. And I know that my table um, is, or my lamp I should say, half of it is the bottom part, half of it is the shade, and I make little marks. You could use your pencil once again to kind of measure to make sure that you did it correctly and have the proportions correctly. But if it's not perfectly correct, it's okay. Um, when I see this lamp, I see the basic shape of a circle. I see the basic shape of a rectangle and a rectangle at the bottom. I'm going to add more detail to this in a second. I also see another skinny rectangle and then the blind, or the shade I should say, of the lamp exceeds this um, edge of the lamp body so it sticks out a little bit farther like this now if you wanted to you can change the shape of the lamp shade you can make it stick out more and turn it into a trapezoid like I did with the uh, video for kindergarten first and second grade I'm going to change this bottom part and add more detail I see a beveled edge or lip here, soften that shape, then come down, and then the metallic part will be here. Erase any unnecessary lines, and that's looking at it directly. And I still feel like this leg is higher than this leg, but that's okay. I feel like this is at a slight angle and it should be parallel to the edge. But remember, this is just practice. Alright, so let's say that we're standing up looking downward at the table. Um, just like I taught you before, when you look at an object from a different point of view, the object tends to change and the shapes that you use will change as well. So when I look down at the table, instead of seeing a rectangle, I see an oval, like so. And remember, you don't want to press down too hard. This part is a little bit um, more inward than the top surface itself. 
So I'm going to draw, I'm going to skip a little space, draw a vertical line, vertical line. And since this edge is curved, this edge will be curved as well. Just like in this point of view, if this edge is straight, then this edge is uh, straight, or I should say horizontal. The legs, as they come down, will get a little closer together, just like a bookshelf. As things get farther away from you, they tend to get um, smaller in appearance, or they will look like um, they're getting closer. I'm going to leave these legs very, very light like so for now. This shelf right here will be here but instead of using um, an oval or a rectangle I have to now also draw another oval here like so. The edge of the leg that meets this shelf will imitate this curve here so I can make this part a little bit darker and this leg will also imitate that edge like so. This part will translate as well. Again I see circles and then trace the outside edges. Like so. So I'm going to darken this oval. I'm going to add a curve line under this oval, like that. And then this part gets more narrow towards the bottom and curve line, like so. This line has to be curved because these lines are curved, like so. I also see part of the back legs, so I'm just going to imitate this line, come down, curve line. On the other side, I'm going to imitate this line, in, out in, out, come down, and curve line. And then these legs, the bottom part you won't see. The drawer, again I'm going to change some things to make it a little bit easier. Vertical lines, horizontal lines. And I see something I forgot to draw and that's this edge here. So have to erase some. See, I told you I make mistakes. Curve line. It's hard drawing when I can't rotate my paper. I'm trying to keep my paper still so you can follow me. Alright, darken any parts I need, like so. Now the lamp on top. The lamp it's slightly off-center when I look at the picture on my laptop screen, but because you and I have artistic license, I'm going to center the lamp like so. And that's this edge that would be here. Um, very lightly, I'm going to draw a circle because that's what I see, and then almost like a cylindrical tube like that. Now I'm going to clean this up before I go any farther. I'm going to just merge these two and make the line soft. What I mean by soft is no harsh edges or corners. Now the lampshade 
when I look at it at a downwards angle, I would not see this part. Lampshade would be cylindrical, like a can, like so. And my camera on my phone is not super great, but I know from my kindergarten first and second grade video, I have this part on the inside and I'm going from memory. Hopefully I remember it correctly. We can reference my video later on. And I have one metal brace going this way, one this way, and one this way, I believe, if memory serves me correctly. Like so, and then erase any unnecessary or unwanted lines, like so. So again, we're taking one object table and we're drawing it two different perspectives, two points of view. We're taking another object and placing it on top of the first, but we're also going to draw it in the same point of view or the points of view that we drew the first object. So what I want you to do is pick a pair, that means two objects, and draw it um, looking directly at it and then looking down on it. And another thing that you all can do on the back is choose maybe a different table, maybe a student desk, maybe you have a desk or a dresser um, that you can draw. Um, so just practice. This is going to be a short video because I really do want you to look at the kindergarten, first and second grade video and practice before you start this. Um, I feel like um, this will lead to the interior space, but what I want to do quickly before I end this video, if you want this table not to be an oval, but um, a more rectangular table, and I'm just going to draw the table, I'm not going to draw the object on top, you can start off by using rectangles. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the same table that's on the kindergarten, first and second grade um, video. And this is not a table that I have, but um, this is more like a generic table. When we take this table, and this would be like a dining table, and we look at it from a different perspective or point of view, it would look more like this with the trapezoid. So it's very important to remember your geometric shapes. Circles use one line, ovals one line, semicircles two, and we have many types of triangles, but triangles three, squares use four lines, one, two, three, four, rectangles use four lines, and remember I taught you a little trick about trapezoids. If you take a triangle and chop the tip off and erase it, you can draw a trapezoid. Sometimes you can just draw it as you visualize it. Sometimes I'm good about that, but sometimes I'm not. Trapezoids have four lines and rhombus, a rhombus also has four. Um, the numbers inside correlate with the sides or the numbers of lines you use. Um, you don't have to do this. This is just a uh, quick review. Um, so for tables, draw what you see. It's what I did on all of my videos so far. I took a picture of it with my um, camera and I basically transferred that picture to my laptop. Oh, that's way too wide. And I have the dis uh, image displayed so I can see it. Again, take this corner, draw a vertical dotted line, an imaginary line. 
like that. Um, you can add things on top of this, like, for example, you could draw a cup or a vase or a can if you want. I'm looking at this glass cup beside me. This glass cup that I have has a handle like this. And because this is glass, you would be able to see through it. So this is the bottom edge of that glass. And then I have a straw that's sticking out. And that straw is like a dark blue. So your two objects can be any two objects. Try to pick a table or something more um, rectangular when you look at it from the front. Um, just kind of experiment with it. Um, just pick some easy things that you can put together that stay still. For example, I wouldn't recommend putting a cat on a table um, just because the cat will move or jump away or jump off the table unless you can snap a picture really quickly. But just try to pick some household objects, things that you can find. Um, I don't want you going out to the store to buy things, but just look around, be creative, and just put things together. And um, again, this is just a little exercise for you all. And we'll continue this next week. We'll add to the difficulty next week. And next week, I'm going to show you how to draw two things, hallways and rooms. So let me remind myself, hallways and rooms. Um, and so we're going to build up towards drawing a space, a room, and then you're going to fill this room with objects that you can find. And then we'll move on to another project. So in conclusion, remember, um, we're working up to a larger, um, more difficult project. These are just exercises for you to uh, keep your artistic gifts and talents and abilities kind of sharpened. You don't want to um, not use it. What is the saying? You uh, don't use it, you lose it. And so um, this is just little fun little exercises. Um, if you have any comments, I guess you can leave comments on the videos or I'll be um, making either Zoom uh, conference meetings on Fridays. And um, that's when you can kind of talk to me about some things you may want me to teach you how to draw or if you have any suggestions on future projects that you may want to do. And as always, have fun and be creative.